one, two, three. Okay, I'm done. Go, go with that one, I'll just get you guys. Okay, we're going Good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made. It is a wonderful day of salvation by grace and faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Well, please join me in a call to worship. Clap your hands, people of God. Heavens, brothers and sisters in Christ. Witness the power of our God. Clap your hands, people of God. Shout to God with Christ and joy. Please join me in opening our opening hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. seeing your full glory and might. Open our eyes to behold the risen Christ who ascended to you in glory. Open our hearts this day that our spirits may ascend to you in glory. Open our hearts this day that our spirits may ascend to you as he ascended that day. Focus our thoughts on the power of your salvation, that we may move beyond the mundane to contemplate mysteries and wonders worthy of your meditations. May we be found worthy of your great gifts, and may we be clothed with your power on high. Amen. Amen. Well, it's time for greetings. Uh, greet one another.
know it's uh, time for some announcements. Uh, open your bulletins and and uh, be aware of the uh, of the announcements. And uh, we'll uh, we'll have some 150th year tribute to share in a few moments by Janet Berry and Debbie Bryan. And we got a uh, memorial service out at the Tipton Cemetery out west of town here. It uh, starts at 10 a.m. tomorrow on Memorial Day, and everyone is invited. It's also known as Oak Hill Cemetery, but uh, just west of town. We, we, I, I think we all just used to call it Tipton. Uh, Tipton, back in the great great grandparents' day, that's about all that was here. It was, uh, Three blocks, four blocks wide, and four blocks long. So, uh, we got a we got a, another sesquicentennial committee meeting coming up, June sixth. And I think Debbie will be saying something about photos. Is that right, Debbie? About the trivia. The youth group's going to meet today after fellowship. And we, uh, we got our planning and coordination going on for our Vacation Bible School, July 11 through 14, with the theme, Food Truck Pantry, on a roll with God. And we want to we want to congratulate all of our graduates of 2022. We celebrate with you, and we are proud of you and your achievements, and God bless. And there, there, uh, there should be a few here today, and... Uh, and then uh, we, we get to welcome our new uh, young people who have been part of our confirmation classes. And they'll be confirmed today. Samantha Baumgartner and Jenna Cray and Isaac Baumalow. And uh, pay attention over here. On, on, uh, everyone is going to get connected. And, uh, you know, we... Tuesday, you know, we got our 5.30 prayer meeting. Everybody, anyone's invited to come. And then our 6.30 Bible study. Mm -hmm. And uh, Battlefield of the Mind. By Joyce. Yeah, who is it? Joyce. Guys, Joyce Myers. She's a, she's a wonderful Bible teacher. It's, it's a really wonderful study. It really gets you into the Word. And, and then we got our Wednesday night uh, well, no, Wednesday at 9 a.m. children's devotion that Pastor has with our preschool children downstairs. And Thursday, June 2nd, I for the choir practice. Dave, you're welcome to come. We can do, you can need all the help we can get. And uh, Saturday, many minutes at 7 a.m., men's Bible study. And then here we back on the June 5th Sunday already for our Sunday service. Now we got. Look at all these birthdays in May. And June. Stephanie Baumgartner. Marilyn Sharman. Emily Devine. Marlene Drake. And in June, we got Josie Walker. And Diane Vogel. And look at here, we got Elmer and Judy Beckler. Six one. Happy anniversary, Judy and Elmer, and then Fred and Marlin, Marilyn, Fred and Marilyn Sharman. Uh, congratulations, <coughs> Fred and Marilyn. Wonderful. Let's say happy birthday to them. And then we're going to have Dave Walker come up here and give us a word that he wants to share with us. Let's say happy birthday to them. That's all right. There we go. Okay. 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 She's got it. Be sure to say hi and 
Welcome. Come on up, Dave. Hi there. Uh, I just wanted to thank everybody <clears throat> from the bottom of my heart and Josie's too for everything that everybody did when we were down. Uh, we just had a heck of a time. Everybody that came over lifted our spirits immensely. And I can say that, uh, that uh, God does wonderful things. He really truly does. Um, I found that out during the time of need. And uh, we're doing better now. So uh, thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. You know what? You look on the back of your bulletin. Now, the pastor's going to be praying. praying later on for this whole uh, all, all these that are listed on this page be, be, be aware of them and hold them in your prayers and uh, uh, Dolores Wagner uh, I was just uh, uh, Debbie shared with me just a, a little while ago is uh, at Mercy Hospital in Cedar Rapids for uh, control of back pain please hold her up in prayer and uh, yeah, that's what I want I think that was about it. Is there, is there any other, is there any, any other prayer, prayer requests? Any other announcements? Go, well, Dave. A friend of mine, uh, he just was diagnosed with uh, throat cancer. Um, he's from the Iowa City area here. Lives in Des Moines. What's his um, first? His name's Alan Cabela. Alan. Alan. Cabela. Okay. Cabela. We got it. What's his condition? He has throat, tongue cancer, okay. but they think they can take care of it with radiation and, but, and there's chemotherapy. Cancer, there's throat, throat, and cancer. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Wait. One other one. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a microphone. Uh, yeah. Uh, Desi um, has a good friend, uh, a co-worker, who um, suffered a catastrophic result after a supposedly routine surgery this week. It's heavy on her heart um, to have to go to the to survive, and maybe she's already passed. Um, no. They plan to donate the organ, so that will be done the next couple days. So, so a young woman, 30 years old. That she's hanging in there, but no, no. They, she's oh, been declared right now. They determined her grave. Okay, what what's her name? Jenny Kennedy. Debbie. Jenny. 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 Okay. Her husband moved is a firefighter in Cedar Rapids. They live in Iowa City. Okay, I got Jenny. Kennedy. 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 Oh man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you hear that? <laughs> Would you announce that full name? Because I, I am getting confused here. So it's, a, it's my hearing. It's a... Jenny Kennedy. Okay, K I N N Kennedy. Like John. Like President Kennedy. Oh, all right. Jenny Kennedy. Oh, my, my apologies. My yes. apologies. Yes. It's called Signs of Gaging. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, well, you let's uh, let's hold these people up in prayer. Allie Cavella and Jenny Kennedy, and, uh, and uh, her family. My goodness. So let's see. Well, now it's time for the 150th year uh, anniversary trivia update with Anna Mary and. Good morning. Today I will be talking about a vote in February 1994. The congregation of this church made a commitment to build a parsonage for the full time minister. As you recall, last week we said we went in with North Liberty all those many years, and now we finally got a full-time minister. 
a, a pledge service was conducted for funds. A committee was appointed with Perry Beckler as chairman, Mike Ryan as treasurer, Carly Stapes as secretary, and Bill Rupert, who agreed to act as contractor and overseer. The lot for the site was purchased from Mike and Audrey Ryan at 239 West 2nd Street in Tiffin. Groundbreaking took place on June 1, 1994. By using much volunteer help, over 3,000 man hours, the parsonage was completed and an open house was held on April 9, 1995. The cost of the parsonage was $110,000. Monies were borrowed from Hills Bank and the Iowa Methodist Conference. Pastor Berlin and his family moved into the parsonage on April 17, 1995. Thank you. I just wanted to um, talk again a little bit about uh, the project of getting pictures um, and so within a month uh, we have the event June 26th where we will be celebrating marriages and um, certainly especially because we're doing 150th this year we're particularly interested in weddings that held, were held at you know the churches on this site but any person that's active in our church we celebrate this you know your marriages as well so please don't hesitate to bring in your wedding photos so that we can celebrate your marriage um, as well. I'd like to put together a slideshow and so all the pictures we can gather, you know, I'd like to uh, include in that. So I wanted to clarify that in case you thought we were only interested in the ones uh, that were married here because many of you chose to be, you know, married elsewhere for various reasons and uh, we celebrate those marriages as well. So we'd like to include them all for our June 26th event. So thanks for getting those to us in some form. Um, I will be converting it to a digital form. You can bring in the actual picture, but if you're capable of sending a digital copy, um, we would love to have that. It, it will work uh, easily, so thank you. David. Okay, it's you see it's uh it's time for our offering. Would the, the ushers come forward please?
time for Pastor Ruby to a pastoral prayer and then our Lord's Prayer.
soldiers who are with us, Lord, continue, we continue to ask that you would just bless them for the sacrifices that they have given for this country and for our freedom. Lord, thank you. And so, I pray that you would just bless each and every one of us gathered here today to worship you. For our confirmants and their families, for our graduates and their families, for all who have come to bring honor and worship you today. Lord, accept our worship and we ask that you would just anoint each and every one of us. We bring back all the praises and the glory to your glorious and mighty name. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ who has taught us how to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we are on the graduates' recognition. And yes, indeed, graduations is a special day that marks an ending and also a beginning. And so today we take time to congratulate our graduates, Fox 2022, uh, Thomas Morland is not with us, but we congratulate Thomas and the family. Uh, that Audrey, Audrey Mayors, uh, can we request Audrey to come forward? And also, Carries Vincent Bangalore.
For the sake of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. And we would like to give you a token for, from the church. This is for Kelly and this is for us. Scripture uh, reading by Don McConnell and Gary Holbury. Please rise. The reading in Psalms 97. The Lord reigns, let the earth be glad. Let the distant shores rejoice. Clouds and thick darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are, found, are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his foe on every side. His lightning lights up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord. Before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all people see his glory. All who worship images are put to shame. Those who boast of it is and worship him, all ye gods. Zion hear and rejoice, and the village of Judah will, are glad because of your judgment, Lord. For you, Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Let those who love the Lord hate evil, for he guards the lives of his faithful ones and delivers them from the hands of the wicked. Light shines on the righteous and joy upon the upright heart. Lord, rejoice. You are are righteous and praise his holy name. Lord, I ask you to bless your word. John 17, 20 26. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That all of them may be one, Father, just as you are me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then in the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with them, with where I am. And to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you now known to them, and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them, and that I myself may be in them. God's word for God's people. Doing me as a response to the word.
to remember as they step into the new phase of their life. And so today I would like to address those who have graduated in high school and also those who have finished and are graduating from the confirmation classes that we have had for six months. <laughs> and they are making their public decision of confirming their faith in Jesus Christ. So graduates and those who are to be confirmed today, our text tells us, trust in the Lord. That is the first three, four words in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord. Graduates, as you plan for the next chapter of your life, you have knowledge that you have learned from school, right? And I know your teachers are proud of you that you have finished, even though there were times that you were absent in school. There are times that you didn't want to go to school. <laughs> but then you have finished. And uh, your teachers, your friends, and the, all the experiences that you have in high school have given you wisdom. And in church too, confirmance, as you decide to become professing members of our church, I am speaking to Isaac, to Jenna, and to Zemanza. As you decide to become professing members of our church, this means you accept the responsibility of a member and most especially confirm your faith in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So in this occasion of your life, I encourage you to number one, trust God. Can you say it? Confirmance and graduate, I trust God. The Hebrew word for trust expresses a sense of security, which results from having someone in whom one can place one's confidence. In the Old Testament, people put their confidence in many things. <coughs> Not all the people History tells us that in Old Testament there are a lot of gods. But then the God of the Israelite people, they call him Yahweh. And they believe in Yahweh and they put their confidence in Yahweh. They believe that Yahweh is faithful and trustworthy. They believe that their God, Yahweh, does not change. And his love is constant. We have Bible characters that prove this. Abraham believed a God who is trustworthy and is faithful to him. And so he trusted God. He followed God's command and even things were difficult for him. He still believed in God's faithfulness. He did not lose his faith that God would fulfill his promise to him that he would become the father of many nations, despite the fact that at the time he didn't have a son. And we know what that Abraham had to wait for a long time. And in his long waiting, he never faltered in trusting God. We also have Job. Job was tested in every aspect of his life. Even when all things were taken from him, all his possessions, his family, his loved ones, he even got a disease, a terrible disease, yet he trusted God. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, I believe this is not just foundational to the confirmants and to the graduates that we are honoring today, but it is too for each and every one of us. Amen? Amen? It is foundational that we believe in a God who is faithful to us. That we believe in a God who is trustworthy. That means He keeps His promise to us. He keeps His promise to you. He never falters. He never changes. So for, for, for those who are grad, those who are honoring the graduates and the confirmant, if you want to be victorious in life, trust God to take care of you through all.
there will be difficulties, there will be problems, and you will be tried. But despite all of this, it is foundational that you believe in the faithfulness of God. That means that God's love for you does not change. He loves you. Whatever problems or trials may have come or will be coming in your lives. Even if your plans, even if your desire, because I know as young people, you have your dreams, you have your plans. But then in, in, in reality, not all of those will come to pass. Who, who can say that your dreams will all come to pass? We can say, right? But even, even if your plans and desires and dreams do not materialize, or even if you get problematic, or even if there are delays in your life, still believe that God is faithful and He is trustworthy to you. Amen? Amen. Because God never changes. He keeps his promises to his children. God keeps his promises to your children. Are you a child of God? Yes. Amen, we are. When we became a child of God and accepted him as our Lord and Savior, God's justifying and sanctifying grace envelopes our life. And God's promise to give us abundant life as we follow and obey His will in our life. Number two, lean not on your own understanding. The word understanding refers to insight, prudence, and intelligence. Human understanding cannot be our standard as we live our life because human understanding is faulty. We are not perfect, right? Humans, we are not perfect. Even if you say your IQ is, I don't know, 100, 200, 300, 1,000. <laughs> we are not perfect. So human wisdom is faulty. What we need is the word of God. God gives the guidance through the scripture. If you, teens, countermans, and graduates, read, study, and make God's word, the Bible, a part of your everyday learning, you will be guided by the wisdom that comes from God. And that is the reason why we chose to give you a Bible. Because this Bible, we pray that it will not just be, it will not just serve our remembrance of this day that we have honored you, but we pray that you will have interest and desire in your heart to read the Bible. The wisdom that you need to succeed in life is all written in that book, in the Bible. Read it diligently. And don't be afraid to put your markings in there, okay? If you have questions, put a big question mark. Put markings, because those markings will remind you that indeed you have read the Bible, and indeed you want to grow in closer relationship with God. And the last one, in all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. So the word there, acknowledge. Acknowledging means allowing God to do what He wants to do to your life, and thanking Him for all that He has done and will do. So acknowledge that He is the captain of your life. Acknowledge God when good things things come to your life. Acknowledge Him when victories come to your life. Acknowledge Him as the provider of all that you need, the giver of your triumphs and victories in life. When you acknowledge God, that means you give Him the glory. All your achievements, well, you take pride in them. We, well, of course, if you have achievements, that's your achievements. But most of all, the glory is due to God. So give God the glory. In, in a, one of the letters of Apostle Paul, he says, Do everything for the glory of God. So in all the things that you do, give God the glory. In all your achievements, 
Let's remember to give God the glory. Why? Because without God, you can't do anything. Do you believe that? Yes. As believers, we believe that. Without God, we are nothing. Without God, we can't do anything. So, whatever is it that you achieve, you have achieved, and whatever it is that you will achieve later on in your life, don't forget to give God the glory. And you acknowledge God when you come to Him and inquire. What? Does the word inquire entail? Inquiring is just asking. It is just like asking for guidance, right? Inquiring is just like asking for wisdom. If I don't know anything, well, I remember when I was practice driving, I would ask, Baby, is this the right? What should I do? Because I didn't know. I didn't honestly, I didn't know what to do. So I should inquire, right? What about you? Have you experienced inquiring? Or you know everything. <laughs> In all your ways acknowledge him. We acknowledge that God is God when we go to him and inquire about things in our life. Especially when we make decisions in our life, right? So when we make decisions, what should we do? Some people inquire God, when they are in a mess, when they are in problems, let's change that. Let us go and inquire and ask for wisdom when we are in front of decisions, not after making decisions. We have made our decisions ourselves and then we say, oh, my decision was a mess. I should go to the Lord. No, let's reverse it. When we are faced with decisions, when we are... Every, every, even when we wake up in the morning, let's go to God and inquire, Lord God, what do you want me to do today? Right? So we are acknowledging God's will in our life. In doing decisions in life, graduates, confirmants, and to all, to each and every one of us, let us come to God and pray and ask for His guidance and allow Him to do what he wants to do for our life. Walk with him. Trust in his goodness. Lean on Jesus and acknowledge him to lead you to the right path in life. This is the challenge for each and every one of us. Graduates, confirmants, remember that your church family, we are proud of you. We are proud of you and we thank God for your life. God's blessings be with you. Amen. Amen. It is a joy that uh, we started with six countermans, but only three were able to make it and now uh, finish. So we will confirm the three young people at this time. We have an insert in the bulletin. You would just follow us. Through the sacraments of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without a price. Through confirmation, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. I present these young people for confirmation. Isaac Jose Bongalang. Samantha Baumgartner, Jenna Cray. Please come forward. May we ask the mentors and the parents to please stand at the back of uh, our confirmants. Parents, you can. Yeah, the parents, please come forward. And the uh, mentors, mentors. Thank you.
family members who want to come forward, you are welcome. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, Isaac, Samantha, and uh, Jenna, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Thank you. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church that Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? Dear brothers and sisters in our congregation, mentors and parents, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Amen. Will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life and include these young people now before you in your care? We will assign these persons with the community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be disciples who walk in the way that we desire. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the New and the Old Testament. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy Son of God, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Father's side, was crucified. Remember your baptism and be faithful. Amen. The Holy Spirit work within you that having been born to water and the Spirit, you may leave as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. As 
members of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? Isaac, Samantha, and Jenna? As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate? I will, I will repeat that. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in his ministries by your prayers, by your presence, your gifts, and your service? I will. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Did you face them? Isaac, Samantha, Jenna, <clears throat> did you come forward? I commend Isaac, Samantha, and Jenna to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we love you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation.
Congratulations, Amanda. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's fine. 